Good morning, everyone. So nice to see everyone here. It's a pleasure to greet you on this World Communion Sunday. There are churches across the world that have started many, many hours before us, gathering together, worshiping together, celebrating the Lord's Supper together, and remembering that we are all tied together in a unity based on our faith. I have some announcements this morning. First, that uh, our congregational meeting that we had anticipated would be today is going to be postponed due to a procedural reason. And we, you know, that just is what it is, but everything is going well. Uh, the sessions met together last weekend, last Sunday. And we've got documents that are being sent to the presbytery this week. And so we're on track. We just missed something along the way that turned out to be very important. In your bulletins, you will see that we've got movies coming up. There's a way to give money to Presbyterian disaster assistance and a way to particularly target that uh, donation toward um, victims of Helene. We have various places that would appreciate your time and your contributions. And I would then turn your attention to the inside back cover of your bulletin, which has our prayer list. I also will say that I think for the first time since I've been here, I'm flying solo today. So if I miss something, do not be afraid to just say, go back. <laughs> All right, shall we read together the names of the individuals that we desire to keep in prayer together? Kelly, Mary, Pam, Evelyn, Robbie, Linda, Mina, Richard and Alice, Wayne, Asa, Jenny, Joanne, Tanya, Sam, Sarah, and David, Tina, Joel, Abby, a friend of the congregation, Lynn, Anna, Nicholas, and Patty. Are there any other prayer concerns that anyone would like us to add? Please, as you go through your week, keep these individuals in prayer. I invite you to greet one another in your pews, pass to them the peace of Christ, and we welcome all who are here today. We are so glad that you have come to join us. Join me, prelude, let us, thank you, uh, let us center ourselves for worship as we listen to the prelude.
If you are comfortably able to do so, I invite you to stand and join together in our call to worship. <clears throat> we gather from west to east, from the south to the north, to celebrate the God of love who accomplishes, who accompanies us in our acts of peace. This God of peace accompanies us in each and every circumstance around us. We praise God's name. Amen. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Our God, who is our Creator God, today as we gather for worship, bless us with discomfort at easy answers, half truths, and superficial relationships. Bless us with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people. Bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war. Bless us with enough foolishness to believe that we can make a difference in this world. 
In the name of the Creator and the Redeemer and the Sacred Spirit, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We come now to our time of honesty before God. Faced with God's goodness, we recognize our own failings. In the knowledge of God's mercy, we dare to tell the truth about ourselves and our world. In the confidence of being God's children, let us confess our sins. Gracious Lord, creator of this universe, in your generosity you have given us a world of abundance and diversity, yet we live guided by greed and selfishness. We confess that we have hoarded and consumed the world's resources, considering them our own, driven by our consumerist behavior and our desires for personal gain. In Christ, you made us brothers and sisters and intended for us to be united. Yet we have built barriers to separate us from those who are different from us. You gave us wisdom and creativity, which we have used to trick each other and to develop weapons of destruction and death. You gave us laws to order our lives, and we have abused them to take revenge and to punish our enemies. We engage in war rather than strive for peace. We ignore the poor and the weak and honor the rich and powerful. In all this, we have not lived according to your will. Forgive us, Lord, for daring to boast in our human achievements. Forgive us for failing to recognize that you alone are worthy of praise. In your mercy, forgive us our sins and save us from the fires of hell. God accepted us simply because of our faith in Christ, through whom our sins are forgiven. May God help us to continue to sow seeds of peace to those who are near and far.
Does Kinston want to come down? doing some movement through the space I will just share that when we get to the time of communion there will be people here that will have a basket of packets that has juice and a little wafer in it all prepackaged that you can take back to your seats there will be um, gluten-free bread up here on the baptismal font and over here we'll be standing a uh, uh, a chalice and wafers that you can take communion by intinction. Hi, how are you today? Good, I'm so glad you're here. So uh, today in worship, it's kind of a special day and every year, like one time in the year, you know how you have your birthday once a year? Well, it's kind of like a church once a year holiday and we think about on this day how Everybody in the whole world um, who believe in Jesus do some of the same things that we do. They sing their songs, they read from the Bible, they have prayers, and they eat this meal that we call communion. And on this day, we think about the ways that we are more alike than different. So um, think of a friend of yours that you know is a little different from you somehow. Can you think of that person in your head? So what makes that person different from you? So maybe does he like some things that are different from things that you like? Or maybe he's really good at something that maybe you're not so good at? He's like good at um, he's really fast So he's really fast, but you're not quite that fast, right? But you can still like each other, right? And just because he's fast and maybe you're not quite so fast doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you because you've got other things that are special about you, right? So on World Communion Sunday, we try to remember that even though people in other parts of the world aren't just like us, that doesn't make them bad and it doesn't make us any better. It just means that we're different. What's, what's a good thing about having a friend who's fast? Can they go get things faster than you two can sometimes? And you know, what's a good thing that about you as a friend? What do you like to give other people as a friend? Like share my toys with them. Share your toys with them, yeah. And so another thing that we think about on this World Communion Sunday is ways that we can help each other and the ways that we can be good for one another. I want to thank you for helping me get this message to them. <laughs> so do you want to hold on for a minute to say a prayer? Would you mind holding my hand while we do that? Okay, and I'll say something and then you say this after me, okay? Dear God, Dear God thank, you thank you that we are not all the same. And we can like, we can like and, love and love each other. Each other. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
that if you have not yet, but sometime along the way in the day you will take time to read the portion of our bulletin that says for reflection, because it talks about the origin of World Communion Sunday, and it started in a Presbyterian church. Not that we're too boastful about that, but what a nice thing. <laughs> And in our uh, journey group this morning, in our adult Christian ed group, we read the Belhar Confession today, and we looked at ways in which some of the history of the Presbyterian Church has not been so welcoming and inclusive and affirming. And so we at least want to acknowledge that as well. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. Holy Spirit, grant us openness and give us understanding of what each one of us needs to receive through Holy Scripture. When we are facing a difficult choice between the easy and the right decision, help us to choose the narrow path. Amen. So I will be reading from uh, the book of 1 Corinthians and mostly from 12, chapter 12, verses 12 through 20, and then again chapters, uh, verses 25 through 27. And in this part of Paul's letter, he is trying to emphasize to the church the concept of unity and he's acknowledging that we might not be all equally gifted, but we are each uniquely gifted, and that is part of God's design. And so he uses the human body as a metaphor to try to explain that. Christ is like a single body which has many parts. It is still one body, even though it was made up of different parts. In the same way, all of us, whether Jews or Gentiles, whether slaves or free, have been baptized into one body by the same Spirit, and we have all been given the one Spirit to drink. For the body itself is not made up of only one part but of many parts. If the foot were to say, because I am not a hand, I don't belong to the body, that would not keep it from being part of the body. And if the ear were to say, because I am not an eye, I don't belong to the body, that would not keep it from being part of a body. If the whole body were just an eye, how could it hear? And if it were only an ear, how could it smell? As it is, however, God put every different part of the body just as he wanted it to be, that there would not be a body if it were only one part. As it is, there are many parts, but one body. And now I'm going to back up in the scripture and go to a place where he is talking about spiritual gifts. He also says that there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit gives them. There are different ways of serving, but the same Lord is served. There are different abilities to perform service, but the same God gives ability to all for their particular service. The Spirit's presence is shown in some way in each person for the good of all. But it is the one and the same Spirit who does all this. As the Spirit wishes, the Spirit gives a different gift to each person. Then Paul goes on to say, Let there be no division in the body. All its different parts have the same concern for one another. If one part of the body suffers, all the other parts of the body suffer with it. 
If one is praised, all the other parts share in its happiness. All of you are Christ's body, and each one is part of it. And then from the book of John, I will read a very familiar passage, and I will follow it up with the next sentence, which we perhaps don't always read so often. For God loved the world so much that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not die, but have eternal life. For God did not send God's own Son into the world to be its judge, but to be its Savior. This is the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we hear from Paul a combination of two things. One, this metaphor of the human body, and then the second thing being that the Spirit is the gift giver that gives us uh, different gifts and skills and abilities and empowers us. And it is a very reformed tradition kind of thing to say the Spirit gives to whomever the Spirit chooses in whatever way the Spirit chooses. Um, and that is part of our reformed theology at, as well. It would be so easy for me, having come out of a medical setting uh, in the past, to talk about the delightful intricacy of the body. And I suspect that you have heard that sermon uh, a few times over the course of your lifetime sitting in the pews. And it is no surprise to us as we age how an illness or a uh, pain in one place, we ultimately find out is really connected to something else. So, um, uh, so we might feel a tingling in the bottom of our leg, let's say, and we find out actually it's in our back, like the real source is in our back. So we know, we know that our um, body is very amazingly interconnected. It's incredibly complex. It's like taking care of all of these things for us and we're not even conscious of it. But I would propose to you that when you understand that, you can also expand that and say there are biosystems in the world that are acting on equally a complex level. So that's why we find out, you know, if we do one thing in our waterways uh, upstream, then uh, fish and wildlife and other living organisms downstream can show the results or the consequences of that behavior. And ultimately, all our plastics end up in the ocean, right? And there is like a big garbage patch in the ocean. So we know that there is just incredible, incredible intricacy and delicacy to all of these systems that God has created. And in that is an interdependence. We have interdependence on the parts of our body. We have interdependence in our biodiverse ecosystems. We have interdependence with other people around the world. And if, it's, if you have a hard time getting your mind around that, just think about how many people it took to get an egg on your table in the morning for breakfast.